Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and I teach watercolor a new tutorial every week. And this week we are doing the mermaid. Ooh, mermaid. <laughs> this project um, does have a lot of steps, but if you guys just stick with me, you guys can do that. Um, we are going to do this beautiful project in seven steps. Wow. Yeah, so, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't even introduce Michael. Michael's oh. working our cameras. Hello. He's also my husband. Also, Keenan is still here. We're just bringing Michael in for a little bit too. I'm excited about that, but I'm a little biased, so. <laughs> I was waiting for you to, to make a joke. None to uh, be made. I don't know. There's no jokes there, it's all serious. <laughs> okay, so seven steps. Our very first step, we are going to be doing the water. Our second step, we will be painting the skin of our mermaid. Our third step, we will be doing the first layer of hair. Our fourth step, we will be painting the tail. Our fifth step, we will be going in and doing the second layer on the hair and then also painting her seashell top. Uh, sixth, sixth step will be her face. And the seventh step will be details, okay? We are using two paintbrushes around six and around two. Also have a sponge or a paper towel handy for when we're doing our water. Um, you, if you all also have like a large wash brush, that will be helpful, but I'm just gonna use a paper towel. Um, and we are using four colors. So our very first color is, I wanna make sure I say the right yellow, dandelion yellow which is like such a bright, happy yellow. I love it so much. Our second color is fuchsia. Our third color is violet. And our last color is deep blue. Now these are liquid watercolors uh, with, from Dandelion Paint Company, which is our own house brand paint. Um, if you want to use other liquid watercolors, I recommend Dr. PH Martin's. They're excellent quality. Um, or if you have two paints, um, there's other great brands out there too. I've heard great things about Core. I've also used Windsor Newton. They're great. Daniel Smith is really amazing. Really, use what you have. Okay. Make some. You can make some. I've made watercolors have before. You really? Yeah. I have. It's fun. Okay. We are going to do our outline and then we will do our oath and then let's get painting. So <clears throat> on your outline, you're gonna tape it to your watercolor paper. You'll notice that I also tape the edges of my watercolor paper so I can have a clean edge when I'm done with my painting. And then you do your graphite paper, dark shiny side down, and then you use a pencil, pen, whatever you have to trace. You wanna make sure you make this as light as possible because watercolor is transparent. So you're gonna see marks. Um, I'm gonna make mine darker since I want this to show up on the camera. But for you guys at home, try and make it really light. Now, I have heard a lot of feedback from people. There are some people that get frustrated with the graphite paper, which is totally fair. I mean, it's kind of a temperamental little guy. You know what I mean? You gotta be gentle, You got your pressure's gotta be so-so, all of that good stuff. So if you are one of those people that just cannot stand graphite paper, there are other ways of transferring your outline. You can use a light box. You can use, um, if you don't have a light box, you can just use a window, actually. Um, some people might even just use their computer screen. I've done that in a pinch um, where I've just taped my watercolor paper on my computer screen and then like turned up the brightness on my monitor and was able to do a quick outline. Sarah, let's make a quick million bucks and make erasable printer ink. So you could just like print out outlines and just like once you're done, you could erase them. That would be cool. Yeah. All right. Nobody's, Science. Nobody's, Science, get on it. Nobody steal that idea. <laughs> Me and Michael called it. <laughs> okay, also you'll notice on your outline that I have some like sh shadow marks here on the side of the arm, on the uh, rib cage, on the tail. You don't have to trace those in. That is a visual 
reminder for you to have a darker value in those areas, but it's not necessary for that to actually be transferred onto your paper. But if you feel comfortable doing them, you can, but I mostly do these lines because not necessarily I want you to trace them, just keep your outline handy and you can refer to it as you're painting to make sure that you're putting the shadows in where you're supposed to put them in without having to do these like super dark lines. While, also, you're, while you're tracing, I had a funny thought when you were doing colors. Yeah. Um, I was wondering, how do I know these like secondary color names like fuchsia instead of, you know, pink? It's because in Pokemon, in the old days, the cities were named that color, and when you would go into them, everything was that color. It's so, like, there's a fuchsia city, and when you go into it, everything's fuchsia. Oh, really? That's the only reason. What was your favorite colored city? Well, now I'm embarrassed to say it, because I don't know if I'm saying it right, because I was a child reading it, but okay. Cerulean? Cerulean. Mm -hmm. It's like a blue, right? Yeah, Cerulean yeah. blue is gorgeous. Okay, this face is really tiny. So do your best. Do your best with what you can. <laughs> okay, du -du. making sure there's nothing else that I'm missing before I lift it up. I think I'm good, okay. Once you lift up your outline from your paper, you gotta eyeball it if you missed a line because it is so tricky to try and line it up again. All right, let's do our oath. If you can raise your right hand and repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Thank you. Okay, now. I'm going to address something before we get to it because I know you guys have been asking and that is you want me to show you how to do different skin tones and I've really been thinking about this and I want to teach you guys that I'm not ready. I thought about it. I was going to try and do it in this tutorial, but I want to make sure that I set you guys up for success and it just takes time for me to like figure out the best way to explain it thoroughly and in a way that makes sense. So I'm working on it. I'm just not there yet, but we'll get there. We'll get there. And maybe it's one of those things where I bring in some guest artists who can help, who specialize in different skin tones. That would be really amazing. Just know it's on our radar. It's something that we want to do, but I don't want to rush it. I want it to be effective when we do it. So. I'm just letting you know, I'm acknowledging it. I'm just not ready yet and I'll figure it out, okay? On that note, when you think of a mermaid, where do they live to you? Are they tropical? Do they live like in the cold northern waters? What kind of mermaids are we talking about here? Oh, I would like to think that there are mermaids in all of those areas. Maybe the ones in northern places are super hairy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just furry mermaids. Fermaids. Okay. For me. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start with step one. We're gonna start with the water. So grab your paper towel. And grab your deep blue, okay? The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to get this area wet. So I'm gonna grab my round six and I'm gonna work around my tail if I can. Now, because we're using a paper towel to kind of spread out this blue, um, it might be hard to go totally around your tail and your like limbs and things like that. So I try to keep the darkest part in the corner. And if it overlaps on the tail a little bit, that's okay because that's a darker value that we'll be painting with purple later or with violet. Um, I just totally lost my train of thought. Is that the worst? Yes. That happens to me all the time lately. <laughs> so I'm putting the water down. It's okay if it overlaps a little. Have it try and overlap more on the tail than on any other part, okay? And then I'm gonna take my deep blue with my six and I'm gonna drop it in, okay? 
And using my brush, I'm gonna try and work around this corner. It's not gonna be perfect, it doesn't need to be. Okay, and then now I can use my paper towel to start to spread this color out. Try and get an even wash. Super cool. Now your paper towel is absorbent, just putting it out there. And also if it's too dry, you're gonna start getting these kind of texture lines, which is not bad. I just, if it, you don't know what it's, why it's being caused, it's because it's dry. So if you wanna smooth it out, just wet the area with a paintbrush and then to make it even, go over it again with a paper towel. Okay. I'm having a hard time because I thought when our baby started sleeping through the night, I'd be able to remember my thought train more clearly. <laughs> but now he sleeps and like, I still can't remember. <laughs> we thought that that was a problem, but it's not the problem. I just have aging brain. Okay, so I'm just gonna try, I'm just gonna keep doing this process of painting a section and then using my paper towel to spread and spread it out to get like an even wash, okay? And I want it to have a value change where the corner is the darkest and then it gets lighter as I go up, okay? I'm gonna ask for people because I'm sure it's gonna happen. What if you swoop through your mermaid on accident? Like, is, it, is it the end of the world? Should you start over? It's not the end of the world. It depends on where you swoop through though because I will say the skin tones on like the belly and stuff are such a light value that if you have blue underneath and you try and put like that skin tone on top, it's gonna read green. Okay. Um, so that might trip you up. But if you do it on like the tail or even like the edges of something, that's not a huge deal. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And this is just gonna take a few layers. So give yourself, it's not gonna be super perfect. I don't want you guys to stress about it. We really are just trying to create the illusion of like the depth of the water. And then um, after we do this initial layer, we're gonna do some darker streaks as you can see here. Cause you know how in like, I'm assuming in like photographs of underwater, you can see those sun rays through and you have, it's like those, you know what I'm talking about, right? Is there a better way to describe sun rays than, like, or a better word? Uh, or is that? I think you're nailing it, sun rays, yeah. Okay, um, that's kind of what I'm trying to communicate with that. So let me, we gotta do the first layer of like this, kind of more even. And you can decide how high this blue goes. Like if you want it to go all the way to your top edge, you can, and I'm just, really utilizing my paper towel, trying to get an even smooth wash. You can, tr you can try and use this without a paper towel. Um, like earlier I said, a wash brush, that could work too. Washes are a great way to get even washes. That's why they're called a wash, I would assume. Um, <laughs> so you can see here my blue went over my hand a little bit. I'm just gonna blend that out. And I don't think that was a dark enough blue to actually like have a huge impact. So I'm not too worried about it. And you can see, and also in my reference photo, when I got to like this area, I kind of kept it without paint, without the blue, just because I didn't want to have to like, not only would I have to work around the body, but also it's a really light value. So I'd have to try and make sure that it's the lightest value of what's around it. And matching values sometimes is really difficult. And so when I get close to like almost white, I just let it be white. Okay, so I feel pretty good about that wash and now I'm gonna really embrace the like streakiness. I'm gonna do one more layer. And I want to call out that if you push too hard on your paper towel and like rub too hard, you will start to degrade the paper. So if you see your paper start to like pill up, um, you know, just like be gentle and stop doing it and like just let it be, okay? So I put the blue in. Just gonna take my paper towel and kind of do these kind of sun rays around it.
And again, I'm originating from the bottom and going up instead of going down. Does that make sense? Yeah. Also, I want to point out, I did a sun raise, but this is really dark for this area. You see how that's kind of poking out? Yeah. I'm just going to blend it out. So let's say you do that and it's too dark. Just take water, put it on top, use a clean part of your paper towel, and blend it out. Speaking of dark, uh, I just did a quick little search of mermaid mythology. It's funny that they're like a children's character now because they are not nice creatures historically. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I guess they like kind of preyed on ships and people in ships and kind of like drag you down. Whoa. Yeah, they'd sing real pretty and you'd be like, what the heck is that? And you go over to the edge of your ship and they just snatch you. Mermaids got to eat too, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they ate. I mean, again, this is all just from one website. It doesn't look like they ate people. They were just kind of mean. Oh, really? They just pull you there over. was no reason besides oh. to do it uh -huh. to ruin your day. Uh -huh. They're, They're like, oh, you like this boat? They drag you down to their little city, kill you. Oh. Yeah. That is dark. I know, and now they're just like <laughs> a Disney a Disney creature. Okay, so there's our water. I feel really good about my water. I don't feel like I need to do another layer, but your painting will inform you, so if you want to do another layer, you can. You totally can. Also, if you want to do, we've done other projects, like, um, like I'm thinking of the sea turtle specifically, where I kind of actually just painted the water around the subject and did like splatters and stuff like that. If you would rather do your water gesture that way, nothing wrong with this. Please feel free to make this project your own and have fun with it and play with it because it is your project and you are the artist. All right, now we're moving on to step two. We're moving on to the skin. So we're gonna take some time to color mix. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my round six to mix and I'm gonna try and mix like a neutral color. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of yellow. And you don't wanna do just yellow and fuchsia cause that makes orange. We gotta to tone down that orange. So basically we just wanna mix complementary colors. So to tone down orange, we need to mix in its complement and the complement of orange is blue. So I'm gonna grab some deep blue. And then depending on how much orange I have and how much blue I have in there, it maybe will turn brown or it maybe will turn like green brown. If it's turning green brown, grab a little bit of fuchsia and mix that in and that will tone down the green and neutralize it. Okay, so I feel kind of good about that. It's like a neutral brown color, but I want to have a color, uh, like other piles mixed of a neutral color just so for darker values or things like that. So I'm gonna pull off some of this neutral here and I want to warm it up with a little bit more fuchsia and really give it like strong pinkish red undertones. And if you look at human skin, there's different colorings depending on the person too. So, and like, um, some people have really strong undertones of red. Some people have really strong undertones of green. Some people have really strong undertones of blue. Like every, and that's why I'm, I think that's why I'm struggling being able to teach you really effective, clear ways to paint different skin tones because a lot of it is like, it depends on the person where like my husband has really strong undertones of like greens and it, that's why that color also looks really great on him too. It matches his coloring. I'm I, half tree. <laughs> that's what you are. I have strong undertones of blue and- um, and Clear. <laughs> clear, <laughs> pretty much. So it just, it, it depends. And I'm still trying to get a hold of a way that I can like really succinctly teach you different skin tones. But um, it really depends on the person, okay? so. And also it depends on the part of the body of the face or of wherever you're thinking. Where like under the eyes, I have undertones of like purple and strong blue and green because I have bags under my eyes because I'm tired. You know what I mean? So it's just like, and some people have undertones of like red on their cheeks or, you know, like it's just, 
Sarah, what yeah. if we start the skin lesson now? What if you say like this is lesson one to just start trying to notice in your everyday life, look at people and try yes. to see if you can under like see the undertones of their skin. Lesson yes. one. I love that. And what's really helpful actually in understanding skin tones is actually looking at makeup information because for women you try and get makeup that matches complementary skin tones and so there are tricks that you can do to know what you are like for example like if you have your wrists up and they're like do you see green or do you see blue or do you see purple and then depending on what you see that will inform if you're a cool if you're like a winter or an autumn or a spring, like that kind of stuff. I don't know which is which right now. I would have to like Google it. But um, yeah, take the time to notice the different skin tones in other people and look for those secondary tones. I know that we've talked about, like when we did color mixing, we talked about the hero color and then the secondary color. Pay, pay more attention to the secondary colors and that will inform you more on how you need to mix the skin tone. And we'll reconvene later. We'll reconvene later. Lesson one, done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. I think you dripped on your mermaid. Oh, I did. Thank you. Get okay. too heated. I got so excited, I'm whipping my paintbrush everywhere. <laughs> Michael's like, Sarah, calm down. And I'm like, this is the best. Painting. Mer mermaids. 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 Watercolor. <laughs> okay. All right. Also a good, uh, I'm just thinking of other tutorials that we talked about skin was the eyes one. And I did that with Taylor. And that one was really interesting because me and her approached the eyes project in two different ways. She focused more on like, reds and oranges and i focus more on like neutrals and greens for our skin tones and you guys if you look at that tutorial you can see how that like looks basically to focus on maybe um different ways of approaching skin i only took a couple art classes in my life but one of the drawing classes i took when we were learning how to color pencil skin we always started with a green wash of the entire project and then mm -hmm. layered on top of it. Yeah. I always thought that was weird. Yeah, I like to start with greens or neutrals underneath because um, they're actually more, and I know it sounds weird, but greens are a huge part of people's coloring. It just feels weird. It, it, it's one of those things where your brain is just like, no, it's not right. But then when you layer on top of it, it's like, oh yeah, okay. Okay, and I'm gonna try I'm gonna do one other mix too. So I have kind of like a rosy pink here, like this. This is a fuchsia with a little bit of this brown, but more of the fuchsia. And that will be for like more my lips when, I, when I'm ready to do the actual details of the face. And then I kind of just wanna see what it looks like if I take this yellow and this violet because those, oh yeah, there we go. Yellow and violet are complementary colors and they're actually one of my favorite browns. If you mix them together, you get such a rich brown. So I now have this really gorgeous deep brown that I'm gonna keep and use for like the shading. So I have, you can see here, I'm gonna have like my neutral tones, I'm gonna have slightly pink tones, and then I have my darker value tone, okay? So I'm gonna start by grabbing my neutral, mixing it with water you can mix it with water right on your palette. And then I'm just gonna start painting in the skin. Now, I wanna point out that off of this outline, this is gonna feel kind of like blocky and that's, don't worry, dimension will come when we put in our darker values. Okay? Just an even wash. And if you're like, oh gosh, that's reading so yellow, like that's kind of what my mind is saying right now. First of all, I'm just gonna keep on going. And then second of all, I can also grab some of this like little pink that I already mixed and introduce that to the party too. And it just adds like a little bit of warmth my skin tone. 
Again, I'm trying to work in the lightest layer, like a barely there color. I'm still trying to think of mermaid puns. What about hermaids? Hermaids? And sirmaids. <laughs> Her and sir. That's good. <laughs> Do you want some water facts while we're waiting? Water facts? Yeah. Yeah, what are water so, facts? So, relatively pure water, if it doesn't have a lot of like dissolved particles in it, uh, absorbs reds. And that's why you think the ocean is blue. A lot of people say that it's a reflection of the sky. That's not yeah. true. Oh, really? No. Um, but the thing that's funny is when you think of like pristine blue water, you think of like really rich with sea life and all these things. Blue water indicates that the water is very nutrient poor. Oh. So like, I don't know. If, if it were a rich, thriving water community, it would be kind of yucky because it's full of a lot of things and it doesn't absorb the red as well and other colors get reflected out so like when you think of like uh monterey bay and that mm -hmm. water is kind of like green mm -hmm. and it's because there's a lot of activity happening in that water mm. and there you go that's cool yeah but like does it matter the type of water that you would swim in like is it more is it like scarier to swim in water that is rich with all of that life because it could like harm you i mean like yeah, but your your skin is really amazing. It's it's one of the best barriers possible against everything. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You wouldn't want to swim in gasoline, but like <laughs> your body could do it for a little while. Yeah, you're really resilient. Okay, so I did my first yellow of this or first layer of this um, skin tone. And it was reading a little bit yellow green and even though my mind was freaking out it's okay and i'm going to take this kind of blush color that i mixed and i'm going to do another layer kind of on top of it still really really light layers like i'm using lots of water here my friends we're doing barely there washes on top this process is also called like glazing you might be familiar with it in um like pottery and stuff like that. And that's when you do lots and lots of really thin layers. I thought you were gonna say donuts. You might be familiar with it with donuts. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. This is the hardest kind of painting for me that like really delicate, mm -hmm. slow at a time. Cause mm -hmm. like, I just wanna get a ton of paint on there. You know? I mean, especially if you're new to watercolor and you're used to picking up lots of thick color, like with acrylic or oil or something like that. And then you're like, that's not enough color. That's not gonna show up. But I think that's what draws me to watercolor. Not only is there also, there's like this element of accidental color or textures like always, but it's, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's delicate. It is, um, there's a finesse, Subtle. there's a finesse to it. You know what I mean? And it really is about, I, I love the beauty of the white of the paper. That's why I do so many paintings that don't have backgrounds, much to some people's chagrin, but like it just brings me joy to celebrate the paper itself also. All the framed art in our house is just blank paper. <laughs> it's like, I just really love the white of the paper. It's just framed blank paper. He's not wrong. I don't <laughs> put any pictures in any of the frames. <laughs> okay, so we did our first layer and now we need to make a little bit we need to make this three-dimensional, okay? Because right now it's kind of an even wash. And when you have an even wash against something that's supposed to have form, it's gonna feel flat. And the only way to make something pop or feel like that it actually has form is to do value. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of my darker value here. And I'm gonna pay close attention to, you can refer back to your outline where I have so I know on the bottom part of this left arm, I'm gonna put a shadow, the left part of this rib cage, um, the top of the ridge, rib cage over here, and then pretty much almost all of that right arm, okay? So let's start. So I'm gonna start with that darker color, add it to the bottom, and then try and like blend it up so it transitions smooth. Were you an aerial fan girl? Oh, Ariel was my favorite princess. For which reasons? Um, you really liked her fort collection? 
Her what? Didn't she have a collection of silverware? Yes. Yeah. Yes. There was her collection of thingamabobs. Thing I'm sorry. <laughs> I should have said thingamabobs. Um, I, I don't know why she was my favorite. I think I loved, well, one, I just loved, like, this idea of this underwater world. Like, that was so exciting to me. Um, kind of funny. She didn't want to be a part of it. But anyways. And Eric's gorgeous, obviously. <laughs> and... I don't know, just that she wanted more. I I mean, obviously I grew up in the golden age of Disney animation, so I have all the greats that I grew up with. Little Mermaid Ursula really terrified me. Yeah. She was just like, she was just evil for the sake of being evil. You know what I mean? And like when she got big at the end, it really scared me as a kid. Really? Oh my gosh, yeah. I thought she'd see a therapist. <laughs> Maybe you should. Um, I really, the interesting thing about Ursula as a villain is like she was giving people what they wanted. It was like this really interesting thing of like, be careful what you wish for because she'll take that and use it for bad. You know what I mean? The I feel like that's called the monkey's paw. Oh, really? I mean, I might be getting this wrong, but like it'll grant your wish, but badly. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Okay. So now, hopefully, I can see that my mermaid's body is starting to form. I believe that it actually rounds. And so I have the shadow underneath here. I'm doing a little bit there. And then if you ever were to do it too dark or something, just take some water. Like I'm looking at this kind of rib cage underneath here, and I'm like, that might be a little bit too dark. Let's just lighten that up. You can blend it out. You can try and lift. And there would be a little bit of shadow actually on this right hand side. I kind of want her to have tattoos. That would be cool. Like a Polynesian kind of tattoo on her arm or something. Yeah. Someone make that happen. Okay. That's feeling pretty good to me. And then I'm gonna do like just a hint of the collarbone. Sorry, I just touched my mic, but just a little collarbone line right there just to show that there's like structure. Um, but again, I'm not. That's so amazing. That was just such a little gesture and it really shows up. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah, just a little hint. Dang. Does she have a belly button? Do mermaids have belly buttons? <laughs> no, they don't have belly buttons. I decided that. Okay. That's why there isn't a belly button in this painting. Okay. <laughs> It wasn't that I forgot to add a belly button or okay. anything. <laughs> no, it was definitely thought out. Okay, now I'm going to switch to my two. And I'm going to do the shadows of the finger. Fingers. So like on this bottom left hand, we have the fingers coming around. And I'm going to do those in a dark value to show that they're like coming around on the other side of the hand. And again, we're not doing super detailed here because the, these areas that we're painting are so tiny. It's really hard to get detail in tiny areas. So, um, and then on this hand, I want the thumb to actually be the one that's highlighted because it's, it's going like this. And this is the part that we see more with the light hitting it. And so we want that to be its lightest value. And then here we have lots of like ins and outs of values like lows and highs. Peaks and valleys. Peaks and valleys, thank you. But I'm just going to simplify that because again, this area that we're painting is like a quarter of an inch. And I'm just going to leave the thumb highlighted and then kind of just do like little darker value lines just to give the suggestion of fingers. But nothing like too crazy. Have you seen people who paint like those miniature paintings that are highly detailed? Yeah. They use like a magnifying glass. Yeah, it's amazing. <sighs> it stresses me out. I just feel like I'd be stressed the whole time. Why? I don't know. Irrationality. Okay, I feel good about that. And again, I'm gonna teach you guys this trick that I do where sometimes if I'm not sure about something, I'll unfocus my eyes while I'm looking at that area and if 
I can kind of tell what it is with my eyes unfocused, then I move on. And sometimes when I like look so detailed, where like looking at this hand, you're like, what the, how is that a hand? But like if I step back and I unfocus my eyes, it's like, no, you could totally tell that's a hand and that's all I need to do. I just need to give the viewer enough information to understand what part of the body it is and move on. So even if, it, even if they, it keeps that kind of mittened shape that's on the outline, that's okay. And that's our skin, that's Beautiful. our skin tone. Going back to my uh, drawing class days, I always had problems with hands because they're so hard. Mm -hmm. And so I would always be creative and like, if there was a hand in it, I would like, make it holding something or, you know, yeah. creatively hide it. So yeah. you could give her a spear or a trident. I would just always have bouquet, like flower bouquets. Nice. <laughs> All right. Now those were probably the two longest layers. I just want to give you guys a little bit of a, of a I know we've been at this a long time. We're, we're only barely moving to step three, but the rest is fairly quick. Um, this was just like the base of it. All right, so now we're moving on to step three. We're gonna do our hair layer. So I'm gonna make a light pink. I'm gonna take my fuchsia, add water to it. And across all of the hair, I'm gonna do a light pink wash, evenly across. Imagine how hard it would be to color your hair underwater. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> or to do your hair. It won't stay down. <laughs> that was step three. Wow. I know, you guys did it. Okay, now we're moving on to the tail. So the tail, I wanted to keep kind of like this violet... Um, it's actually one of Michael's favorite colors, like a really blue purple, okay? Like gorgeous Go ahead blue. and say it's the actual favorite color. Yes, yes, it is. Mm. Um, but you guys can choose whatever color you want. If you want to do pink to match the hair, if you want to do even a bright yellow to like bring in a pop of color. Camouflage. You can even mix green here too if you want, where you can mix the deep blue with the yellow and make a green. I will say that the green will be desaturated. I want to just point that out. It's going to look like a muddy green instead of a vibrant green, which isn't bad. I just, just how these colors are, that's how it will turn out. Okay, so I'm going to get some violet and I'm going to mix a bit of uh, deep blue in there. Oh, that color is, is so, so good. good. Okay, and then the bottom part here, we're trying to create the feeling of volume and form, right? And so this tail is kind of turning away from us and also it's underneath her body, right? So if our light source is coming here, then this part is gonna be shadowed more, not only because it's turning away, but the light is more on top. But here at the tail, and we can see on our outline here, I have a little bit of darker value at this top also because we still want to show that this is form forming around, okay? On her merbut. On her merbut. And I'm just going to start right here at the tail and go along this right edge. And then I'm just going to take water and just blend up. I'm not grabbing any more paint. I'm just using the paint that I've already laid down with that first layer on the right. What I don't understand is how can anyone have a favorite color that's not that? That's such a good color. It is such a good color, but I'm, it's a great, I love painting with this color, but it's just not my favorite color. But I do love painting with it. Yeah, okay. And then when we get to the tail, the tail part, I got a little bit playful with this tail part. I made, um, I wanted it to feel almost like fabric, you know, and kind of wispy and um, I don't know, just kind of playful. Cause again, not only are we the artists and we can decide what we want our creations to look like, but mermaids are mythical creatures. And so you really have the like authority to make these tails, make the shapes, make whatever you want to happen, you totally can. And so I really like, instead of just doing like the two pronged, I wanted it to feel like petals almost, like layers of petals. 
What is it called? A betta fish. Oh yes, yes. Like I was thinking of like those flowy fins on fish. I like to think that different mermaids come from different kingdoms where they have different lineages. And this one comes from like the betta fish one. Yes. You can also get like shark tail one or I don't know. Yeah. Tuna tail. Or like seahorse tail. Ooh. That would be that'd cool. That'd be fun. Or merhorse. Yeah. Or seamer. I don't know. Too much. I didn't like that one as okay. much. Sorry. <laughs> but I did love your fur. What was it? Fur maid. Fur maid. <laughs> or the hairy <laughs> northern that, ones. You can make it just hair. <laughs> <laughs> An underwater bear is what I'm thinking. And then um, you're going to see here. I did. I washed it. I did a wash on here, but I'm getting some really gorgeous textures from the water dispersing and drying unevenly. That's how you get blooms. And I'm gonna leave it. You are free to blend it out, but like sometimes when I get just like gorgeous textures like this, they're so beautiful that it's just like, I don't care if this kind of messes up the illusion of a perfect uh, value transition. We can tell it's a tail and look at that really cool texture right there. That's when things like that happen. It's just like, I'm not mad about it. I'm going to let that go. I am going to do a darker, one more kind of layer of that darker value right on the right hand side, just to really show that this part is shadowed. And if you want to make it even darker, you can mix a little bit of yellow in there and that will um, create a darker value as well. It's like a trade off of like achieving the form you want and highlighting the medium. Yeah. Like sometimes you just want the watercolor portion to be the star. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm a huge, I love that. I think that's why I've always fallen in love with watercolors because like it allows me to do that so freely and like almost easily because they, you don't do that on purpose really. It just happens. And then you're like, oh, well, look at that. You want to talk about the true merits of watercolor that we don't talk about enough? Hmm. The best part, Sarah, it doesn't smell bad. Yeah. Unless you have like rancid Ew. stuff. Does that happen? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Not to me. I don't know. It's like the secret star of the medium. It's just like, it doesn't smell bad. Thank goodness. Okay. Oh gosh, I'm so in love with what happened right there. I can't even deal with it. Can't even deal. Let's do the top part. I'm just gonna use my round two for this and I'm just kinda gonna like do a dark value on like the lip of this tail. A darker value. Kinda almost outlining, but please make sure your skin layer is dry or else it will bleed. All right, let's talk about more mermaid anatomy here. Is that just like a, like a flap? What is happening there on a mermaid? It's like the top of a sweatpants. Does yeah. like, can you get like sand caught in there? Is that like an irritant for them? I don't know. Michael, I think you're asking the wrong person here. <laughs> My mermaid didn't even have a belly button, so I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> okay, so we just finished step four. We're moving on to step five, the second part of our layer. So hopefully by now your hair is dry. I'm gonna take that fuchsia and you can leave it the same dark value if you wanna introduce a tiny bit of violet in there to make it like this really gorgeous pink purple. You can, I'm going to, cause I think it's a great color. And then kind of following my outline, I'm gonna use my round two and do the darker sections in her hair. So thin lines, follow, basically like follow the outlines here. And the reason why we're doing this is because if you look at hair, it's, it's difficult because our brain wants us to just draw every little thin strand, right? And that's why when you first start drawing, you're like, oh, this is a head and this is hair, right? Because we're like, I know that my hair is made up of a lot of tiny little pieces. However, when a lot of tiny little pieces are together, 
they clump together and they create their own forms and shapes. And so what we're doing here is we're allowing the hair to clump and then painting the darker values. And that's how we make it feel more realistic and have more depth and form and shape. It's very hard for me to get a, a handle on because I do want to do individual strands. Oh yeah. I find that like my favorite artistic depictions of hair kind of look more like smoke. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? I do. Totally know what you mean. And there, and that's why I also love just art and illustration in general is because like there's so much freedom there to paint hair how you want to paint hair. Um, but, and this is one way where you do like an even layer and then you go in and you paint the darker values where your hair would have chunked and where you would see like the underneath. And you can even do like more detail lines if you want. Oh, I didn't outline my underneath here. That's funny. That's, I'll just put it in now. No big deal. Eyeball it. You're a rebel. Living life on the edge, I like to say. You can't even tell that it's really like blue underneath there. Okay. That, oh, the second part of step five is the top. So I made like a light purpley pink color for this. You can have it match exactly the tail, you can have it match the hair, you can do a yellow top, you can do whatever you want. I'm just gonna do a light wash. And then when that dries, I'll do the detail lines on it. Okay, and now we're gonna go into the face. Now, I just wanna point out here that because this area is so tiny. I'm not going to get super detailed. This is going to be minor marks that are more gestural, giving the hint of form and shape and body parts. I'm not doing full thing because again, we're looking at like a one inch area. So for the mouth, just really just with my round two, light wash, there's some lips. Okay. I'm going to try not to mess with it too much because this is where you can get you can get into trouble quick. Things can go bad <laughs> quickly. I just picture remember the Drew Carey show? Do you remember Mimi? Yes. With a big blue eye shadow. Yes. <laughs> That's how my mermaid would look. <laughs> <laughs> so you just got to be aware of that and it's tricky because your mind is going to tell you to keep messing with it and all this stuff, but try and just keep it simple. I'm going to do um, just like the hint of the eye, so just like that there's it's kind of like this shape. There's the top lashes and there's the bottom lashes like that. Okay. And then for around the nose, I'm going to use some of this kind of skin tone that I still have on my palette. Try and have it a little bit of a darker value so it will like stand out. And I'm just going to do kind of like a little hint of a nose. I'm going to do a brow. Don't forget the brow. And then if you want to try and add just like a little bit of darker value at the top of the head. Maybe blend out that thing around the nose. And then I feel like my lips maybe got a little bit too big there. And if that's the case, you can just put water on top, grab a clean section of paper towel lift, let that dry and start all over, okay? And then try and define your jawbone a little bit here. Like that. I'm going to come back and do the lips when it's a little bit more dry. I think if I try and do that right now, they'll just go everywhere because it's wet. I've got another little ocean fact for you while we're waiting. I told this to you last night, but I guess uh, hedgehogs, which are native to kind of like North Africa area, they named them urchins. That was their original name. And they named sea urchins after hedgehogs. And I thought that was cute. That is cute. Yeah, Michael told me that. I'm like, <laughs> and like, I can totally see that. They see urchins and they see hedgehogs and they're like, yes. This is exactly the same this thing. This is the same thing, but a C version. Okay, now we're on our last step, which is just 
details, just going back in and doing finishing details. So if my clamshell, I guess, clamshell bralette is dry, I can take my purple or whatever color I want to do darker lines and follow my outlines here. And if you need help on how to do thin lines, we have a beginner series video where I kind of go into detail about how to do that. And then don't forget the little string that somehow holds it all up together. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm gonna do a little bit of um, scales on the tail. I'm not gonna do it across the whole thing. I'm really only gonna do it at the top um, part of the bum and then on the bottom part but and I did do some in the middle but really I feel like this texture is so gorgeous that I do not want to cover it with some scale lines so I'm going to kind of focus more on this area and I'm just going to do you can do individual scales like the U's when we've done scales before like on our dragon or things like that or you can even just do like X's so if I'm doing some diagonal lines this way, and then I'll go the opposite way. It's just creating just a little hint of texture. And if it gets too dark, I feel like it got a little too dark in my highlighted area, so I'm just gonna blend it out. I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom part. So again, just giving little hints. I always, I guess I never thought about it till now, but I always assumed that mermaids are mammals, right? Mm -hmm. Like humans and that the scale portions are reptilians, but I always in my mind just kind of associated that the scale portion felt like elephant skin. Oh. Because they're mammals. I don't yeah. know. Maybe I'm getting too deep into this mermaid thing, but. I can see that. Okay, I put the mouth back in now that my area was dry. And then I'm gonna do one more layer on these fingers just to show that like these are dark, they are shadowed. They are away from the body. Just one more hint. So if you have any areas on your mermaid that you want to define a little bit more, you can. Might have done a little bit too much with that hand. I'm gonna just blend it out. Okay. I think she's, I think she's done. All right, let's do the best part. Let's take off the tape. Okay, so when you're pulling, you wanna pull, you wanna do little bits at a time, start from the inside and then pull away. You wanna do it slowly. I love this tape. If you're wondering what tape it is, I can't remember the name right now, but we are gonna be carrying it soon and we'll announce it when it is available. Um, Cause, um, I want to, this is my favorite tape. I want to tell you guys about it. Is it some kind of low tack or something? I don't know. I don't know the details, okay. so I don't, <laughs> but. But it's good. It's good. It's a good tape. Okay. Look at that clean edge. Is there anything more satisfying? I just can't even deal. Sorry, I got it all through. Now this one, the clean edge is not gonna be as apparent, right? Because I don't have as dark of values. And then at the top, I even didn't paint in some of the areas. There we go. She's done, man. She's gorgeous. I love her hair. I can't even deal. Her tail's great too. Yeah, that wash. My daughter Luna actually has hair like this naturally. I don't understand. It's beautiful. I call she it mermaid hair. hair. 
Mermaid. It's so long. It's long and it has shape and ugh. It's so funny. She's just she's five. She's tiny, and she has just like this huge amount of hair. Yes. <laughs> she's just all hair. What is that uh, Adam's family character cousin it or yes. something where he's just hair? Yeah. That's how she is. She'll come out in the morning and be like just hair everywhere and like <laughs> all the way past her bum. Okay. I cannot wait to see what you guys come up with. You guys are gonna really make this your own. I know it. You're gonna play with skin color. You're gonna play with you're gonna play with the setting. You can even put some jellyfish in here. You can even put some like sparkles if you have some bleed proof white. You can do bubbles like really make this your own and share it i want to see it so if you're on instagram you can tag us at let's go make art or hashtag let's make art uh, we also have a facebook group that the sole purpose of that group is for you guys to share your work with each other and also document the process of learning uh, the reason why people think that art is a skill that you're born with or you're not is because usually people only share their art when they're like professional level right and we need to do away with that. That is perpetuating this idea that like people start off being able to paint like that. And it's not true. So let's document, let's share our, our failures. Let's ask for help. Let's take a minute and learn from each other and appreciate each other's journey because we're all on a different one. So that Facebook group is called Let's Make Art Watercolor. And if you need any of these supplies, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. Michael, I appreciated you and your ocean facts. Thank you. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.